Hello and welcome to the second edition of After 10. This week on the show, we'll take a closer look at the Democratic United Party candidate for president, Moon Jae-in. His plans to help out the middle class of South Korea, his plans to better relations with North Korea, and we'll ask, will he even be on the ballot come December 19th? And to answer those questions and others, we're joined by Shin ji Yun, Moon Jae-in's deputy spokesperson for the foreign press for the Moon Jae-in camp. Thank you so much for being here today. We appreciate it. Oh, hello, Scott. Thanks for having me. We, of course, do appreciate you being here. We were also mm -hmm. wondering, though, and hoping maybe that Moon Jae-in would be uh -huh. coming in with you. Uh, I guess he's a bit busy these yes. days, though. He's in Gwangju now. All so. right. Understandable. Maybe, yeah. uh, maybe next time. Uh -huh. Let's get right to it, starting with the talk of the town these days, the possible merger uh -huh. between your candidate, Moon Jae-in, and uh -huh. the independent candidate in this right. race, An Chul Su. Yes. Uh, the two men met earlier uh -huh. this week. They Anchoosu. seem to have come to an agreement yes. on merging their candidacies before uh -huh. the November 25th, mm -hmm. 26th right. registration mm -hmm. deadline. You're involved in this process. How is everything going right now, and how mm -hmm. confident mm -hmm. are you that these two men are going mm -hmm. to be able to come to an agreement? Since these two gentlemen are not uh, motivated by their personal greed or personal ambition to become a president or to seize the power, um, they have this room for um, concessions. Uh, there may be some differences or discrepancies between their policies. They do realize that they have this same virtually identical philosophy, same goals and um, same values shared by both of them. So that's a um, good starting point. And they met on Tuesday and they um, made this agreement on seven um, issues. Right. And actually um, there was like working level officials named um, yesterday. So um, three people respectively from each camp. So they met together um, actually at 11 o'clock today. Okay. So they're gonna draft a joint um, declaration for new politics. Right. And I think what you're saying is the process is moving mm -hmm. along. Moving along, but yes. But yes. the concern, of course, is that both uh -huh. of these men, mm -hmm. uh, they both want to be president, right? That's why they're on the ballot. So the question that everybody's mm -hmm. asking, and I'm going to uh -huh. ask it anyway, uh -huh. even though I think I might know your answer, but how uh -huh. are they going to come to this agreement? Mm -hmm. How are they ultimately going to decide which of them stays oh, on the ballot? The, the specific method right, right. has not been discussed yet, and it's premature for me to um, express the state on that issue. So once this joint declaration is um, agreed, and there will be another process for um, deciding this um, specific concrete method of how it, you're going to decide which candidate should be the single candidate. So that will come with That'll time. That will come but within the time. We have 16 days left. 16 days, right. right. The clock November is, 25th, the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. And November 25th or 26th is the um, registration right. deadline. So. But Moon Jae-in would, would really, truly mm -hmm. be willing uh -huh. to step aside if that's uh, the way things played out. I don't think that's appropriate. I mean, that's, um, I don't think that's appropriate for me to answer that question. But anyway, just let's open the possibilities. There are tons of possibilities and you don't know what's gonna happen. But these two gentlemen will talk to each other um, in a very mind, so. And they do have that. None of them should be a uh, like, um, blockade or barrier to, um, prevent this current administration to seize the power. So they do share the principle. They're on the same page, is what they you're are. saying. Yes, and I think are. there's no, no question that mm -hmm. Hay is going to ver have a very mm -hmm. easy road to uh -huh. the Blue House if yes, they can't... Yes, the three are on the ballot. Yeah, if they can't right. come to an agreement, they're going to split uh -huh. the liberal yes. vote, and right. Hay okay. is going to have a very easy path uh -huh. uh, to the presidency. Is there uh -huh. any chance Definitely. that they don't come to an agreement? I mean, is there any chance that that happens? I don't think so. <laughs> they will come to an agreement. They, they will, they will. All right. right. Um, let's assume for a moment that Moon uh -huh. Jae-in's name mm -hmm. is going to be on the, ballot on the ballot on December 19th. Uh -huh. And let's also assume for a moment that mm -hmm. uh, he's elected president. Yes. He's going to have a lot of domestic issues to tackle. Uh -huh. uh, your campaign slogan mm -hmm. is people first. Right. The people if, of this country are struggling in a lot of ways mm -hmm. with household debt and, and mm -hmm. a number of other things. Right. What is Moon Jae-in's plan specifically mm -hmm. to help out the middle class and those people mm -hmm. in this country who are struggling right now? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess that relates to um, economic uh, democratization as well. And I want to elaborate on the um, campaign slogan, people first, put the people first. So 
Uh, Mr. Moon's perception is that, I mean, a human being comes first before anything else. Before your job title, before your education, your gender, your sexual orientation, your social background, and your family name, etc. It just goes on forever. So, um, say economic democratization is not an attempt to um, weaken or decrease or uh, diminish the global competitiveness of whichever family-run conglomerates or big corporations for that matter. Um, it's an, an attempt. It's not an ultimate goal, actually, economic democratization itself. It is an instrument to accomplish or create a healthier economy. And um, now it's, um, we witness that the income disparity uh, between the rich and the poor is uh, widening, and economic inequality is getting severe. So say, for instance, um, let's take an example of a hypermarket, this mega-sized hypermarket um, expanding nationwide all over in Korea. Um, if there is no regulation on um, these uh, massive um, hypermarkets, invasion so-called, then, I mean, it is obvious to everyone that the livelihood of middle class, ordinary people, I mean, hard-working hard families, will be adversely affected and infringed. So these hard-working families do not ask the government to pay them like a free handout to pay the money. Uh, on the other hand, they are trying to um, live very hard to make a living, right? So if these mom and pop stores um, at your street corner, uh, in your neighborhood, are just shut off because of this hypermarket, mm -hmm. then they, I mean, virtually get rid of the, their livelihood. So their incoming disparity is going to be wider and wider. So there, that's why Mr. Moon believes that there must be some regulation uh, to monitor and control um, family-run um, or these hypermarkets chains. So Re reforming that, from the top down yes. and then in extension helping right. the middle class who are uh -huh. working in these smaller Right, smaller, medium-sized right. or companies, businesses. The, the question though is, mm -hmm. And this isn't just a criticism of Moon Jae-in's campaign, but also of Ahn Cho-su and, and Pak Geun-hye, to Everyone be fair. Everyone is talking about economic democratization. Every, everybody's talking about right. it. And I think the Korean people are a bit frustrated mm -hmm. because they mm -hmm. don't feel like they're getting the details, the information that they need. Mm -hmm. That they, they say the candidates are very mm -hmm. long on rhetoric, mm -hmm. very short on specifics. So specifically, uh -huh. I mean, reforming the table is, is something that uh -huh. all the candidates are talking uh -huh. about, but mm -hmm. specifically putting the people first, how, mm -hmm. how are the people going to see change uh -huh. under Moon Jae-in if he's president? Yeah. So like I said earlier, if you have this, I mean, currently the hypermarket, uh, if they want to open a new store in a certain reason, they can just report and that's it. filing the report and that's the only process they um, have to do. But if they, if you want to change it like to um, approval system so that um, the FT or other like governing authorities has discretion um, to decide that, I mean, this, in this area, hypermarket should not um, be opening, then the kind of uh, approval system can um, positively affect the library here or the mom and pop stores. So putting regulations on the distance between some of these hyper supermarkets. Hypermarkets or some of like the bakery store or those grocery shops, some kind of um, and, and industrial we've seen some sector. Of that already. Yes, already. Right. And and they are doing that in Europe as well. Right? And it's and you and you believe that would be effective in, in sort of helping people out uh -huh. in the long run. Mm -hmm. Um Moon Jane's also talked about other things like creating mm -hmm. a million jobs and yes. um, uh, giving mm -hmm. free child care for all and an immediate cut uh, immediate mm -hmm. cuts in tuition fees and mm -hmm. people wonder where is all this money going to ah, be coming okay. from the uh, they also worry our tax uh, is going to go up is is that tax, a possibility tax well when you say tax tax increase yeah people are scared of tax increase sure. right so it's not going to be like drastically done by like french um president Olang, the so they leave it to <laughs> Chairperson, he just flew from France to space. But there, I mean, there has been significant tax cut um, on the side of the big corporations and on the wealthy people, one person people, under the current Lee um, tenure, Lee administration. So there should be some adjustment. 
I say that uh, reinstatement the, of the original tax rate um, to be applied on those big corporations so that there will be some more funds to supply these kind of um, policies. And that revenue would be enough to pay for these things that Moon Jae-in wants to do? That's what he do. Uh, another thing Moon Jae-in wants to do is uh, he has said he wants to renegotiate the Korea-U.S. Uh, free Corus trade FTA, agreement, yes. right? What is uh -huh. wrong with the Chorus FTA uh -huh. mm -hmm. as it stands right now? What's, uh -huh. what's his okay. objection to it? He doesn't try, I mean, he's not trying to invalidate the whole FTA, of course, you know that, I right. guess. Right. There are some specific certain provisions which can um, infringe upon the jurisdictional sovereignty, like, uh, for instance, ISD, Investor State Dispute Settlement Procedure. and. They can, uh, some, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of lawyers, uh, jurisdictions, uh, uh, jurists point, pinpoint that um, that kind of investor state uh, dispute um, settlement provision can adversely affect the Korean jurisdictional sovereignty because that uh, is like a strong favor of foreign um, investors um, at the sake of uh, domestic investors. So that kind of provision can be revisited and renegotiated if necessary. And I want to point out that there is also a provision, express provision in FTA itself that um, if one party, um, either party is, um, has a strong problem, then there, that those kind of specific provision can be renegotiated between the parties. So we're going to um, request renegotiation based on that clause. And, and I would have to imagine the mm -hmm. U.S. is, is mm -hmm. going to push back a little bit if uh -huh. Moon Jae-in should do that. How is Moon mm -hmm. Jae-in going to deal with the objections that the U.S. would have about renegotiating this free trade pact that is already right. in effect uh, right, right now? But the thing is, in 2007, the negotiation was like um, completed, and under this re-administration, U.S. Um, asked for renegotiation of some provisions, so that has been done. So again, um, this is our chance to ask for request uh, another opportunity to uh, negotiate, rectify some unfair provisions if uh, they find it necessary. Okay. And <coughs> in this same vein, Park and Hay uh -huh. has essentially accused Moon Jae-in of mm -hmm. flip-flopping on a few mm -hmm. issues, this course FTA uh -huh. being one yeah. of them. Yeah. She points out and says that uh, Moon Jae-in, of course, a close mm -hmm. aide to mm -hmm. former President No Moo Hyun during mm -hmm. his time in power. Mm -hmm. uh, he was responsible mm -hmm. at that time for kickstarting mm -hmm. negotiations uh -huh. with the U.S. on this FTA. Uh, also yeah. says, uh, Park and Hae does, that mm -hmm. uh, Moon Jae-in was for this controversial uh -huh. naval base on Jeju Island before uh -huh. now sort of reversing mm -hmm. course on it. Uh -huh. uh, Park and Hae is saying that Moon Jae-in is flip-flopping. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. How would you respond to that oh. accusation? Well. You know, he's the person, he's the last person in the world to, to play flopping. He's a man of integrity, he's a man of his word. So when the situation evolves, you need to reflect on that change. You just cannot say the same things all over and over again, uh, regardless of any change in the circumstances. And regarding FTA, um, he was the person who involved in commencement of the negotiation on Coros um, FTA. But as I said earlier, um, there has been renegotiation and um, some un unfair provisions were newly inserted as per request by the U.S. So the FTA in Lomian administration and FTA now in um, Lee tenure, the administration are different slightly. Things so, have changed. Things have changed. So there are two issues. So when there is a difference, and then you need to pinpoint and you need to um, indicate that difference. And also, when there is um, a change or shift in external um, circumstances, you need to also consider that uh, change or shift um, in the totality of the circumstances. Otherwise, you are like. Um, you're, You're not, not adapting. Reflecting. You are not ad adapting to the changes. Okay. No. So, so Moon Jae-in is not flip-flopping. He's, he's simply <clears throat> changing his adapting stance based on the conditions yes. around these certain issues. Precisely. Um, we're veering a little bit mm -hmm. into foreign policy, so uh -huh. let's completely change lanes and, and sure. talk about foreign policy a little bit, starting with uh -huh. North Korea, of course. Yes. Uh, Moon Jae-in has said that he will mm -hmm. reinstate the Sunshine Policy 
uh, instituted under uh, President uh, Kim, uh, Kim Dae-jung back in mm -hmm. 1998, followed through yes. with President No Mu Hyun. Right. Uh, what's the case for mm -hmm. bringing the Sunshine Policy mm -hmm. back? Okay. Um, before mentioning Sunshine Policy, I need to um, show you that how this uh, the polling policy under Lee administration has caused a lot of problems like China I assume board. you're not a fan of, of no, the hardline stance. No, I'm not. So, I mean, 46 people were killed. And under Lo Myon and Kim Dae-jung administration, there was no victim or no um, hostile confrontation like that. So this kind of inaction or non-response non -response or hostility doesn't resolve any basic problems from North Korean side. So he need to reflect that. And um, there is like engagement policy, sunshine policy, so-called. He he's not gonna like totally copy sunshine policy because, as I said earlier, there is some um, change in the circumstances. And North Korea has a new leader, and um, in other countries, MG2, I mean, the China has becoming a G2 nation, and it has certain I mean, stronger influence on North Korea. And all these circumstances must be um, incorporated, reflected to make a foreign policy decision. So, Mr. Moon is going to adopt some of the relevant components of the sunshine policy, like which, which are, <coughs> which are what? six party talks, like uh, multi letter box. So, Rather than bilateral talks between North Korea and South Korea, he believes that six party talks involving uh, US and China are more beneficial and more helpful and more efficient to resolve North Korean issues. That's what he believes. So, that kind of um, component can be introduced and um, adapted by himself, but it's not like he's copying sunshine policy and reinstate everything. So, so sort of a sunshine policy <coughs> 2.0, a, a 2 new version. A new version, Moon Jae-in version. Right. The, okay. the criticisms <coughs> of the sunshine policy 1.0 <coughs> were uh, <coughs> pretty loud that <coughs> uh, this aid was given to the North right. without any sort of preconditions, preconditions, that it went to the military, uh -huh. went to the elite, uh -huh. uh, the human rights situation uh -huh. wasn't addressed. Uh, Basically, you know, they got they got all of this help without any questions being mm -hmm. asked. Mm -hmm. Is that going to be changed under Moon Jae-in? Yes, I think there is going to be some change. I mean, it's, it's not free aid, so there should be some um, negotiation discussion that something like um, no nuclear weapons in North Korea. That's so clear to Mr. Moon, and U.S. shares the same philosophy: no nuclear weapon shall be allowed in North Korea. Maybe for um, civilized purposes, they can be um, negotiated, but not for military purposes. So, um, and the difference between um, Kim Dae-jung administration, Sunshine Policy, and even Lo Myon administration as well, um, to Mr. Moon, peace is the economy. So everything shall be approached from economic perspective. So when I mean, North Korea is deemed a land of opportunity, which has, I mean, cheap labor, relatively um, affordable labor force, and other natural scarce resources, things like that. So, Mr. Moon believes that if you open up North Korea, then that's going to be a, a great, huge economic opportunity for both of us, both of North Korea and South Korea. So everything shall be appro approached from economic, practical perspective. Using that as a starting point and yes, then moving on to addressing the other issues. Addressing that issues. Um, you also, just briefly, mm -hmm. you mentioned the uh, Yunpyong attack and the Chunon mm -hmm. attacks mm -hmm. back in uh, 2010. Mm -hmm. Is that something that Moon Jae-in would, would ask the North Korean regime to account for? A lot of South Koreans want at mm -hmm. least an acknowledgement that, that mm -hmm. you know, the, an apology that, of some that's sort. Is that the Lee Myung administration's um, approach. And if you just um, keep um, raising this as precondition to do something, it's not gonna resolve any substantial issues, and that's been approved and that's been witnessed um, in this administration. Okay. So Moon Jae-in would sit down with uh -huh. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un mm -hmm. mm -hmm. without any sort of preconditions. I know he's talked about June 15th of next year as, yes. po as a possible date for right. a meeting. No preconditions. Uh, that that's a meeting. Uh, that's just a for a meeting. So mm. in that meeting. In particular, I don't think there is going to be any precondition, but after that, there may be other factors to be considered. So maybe they'll set the preconditions at that particular time for, for the policy to, to, to come. As the situation evolves, yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> We're a little over a month now away from Election mm -hmm. Day. It's hard to overlook the fact that mm -hmm. 
Uh, we've talked about former President No Mu Hyun a few mm -hmm. times over the course mm -hmm. of this interview. Mm -hmm. Moon Jae-in, of course, a close friend, a close aide of the mm -hmm. former president, and sort of viewed still to this day as sort mm -hmm. of being, I'm not sure what the proper term would be, sidekick or a second in mm -hmm. command. Okay. Now Moon Jae-in wants to be the leader. He wants uh -huh. to be the first yes. in command. Yes. Has this been difficult for your campaign mm -hmm. to sort of get out of the shadow of mm -hmm. former President No Mu Hyun, or is this something that Moon Jae-in and the mm -hmm. campaign mm -hmm. embrace? How have you addressed that? Um, we, I mean, admit that they were cross friends, lifelong. Uh, they share this lifelong history. But Long Myon is was Long Myon, and Moon Jae-in is Moon Jae-in. And back then, like 10 years ago, and it's now um, 2012. So there is time um, difference of 10 years. And although they share um, similar um, ideas or philosophies, they, these two gentlemen have totally different um, personal characters. So um, if you see Moon Jae-in, he is um, very calm. And he rarely makes, makes mistakes because he's not like um, rushed or he's very thoughtful and considerate person. So there is a personality difference. And he also, he's not antagonistic or um, opposed to the people who have different perspectives from him. That means he can communicate with foes and friends alike. He can communicate with any person. Uh, who strongly disagrees with him. So that's a great attribute that Mr. Law maybe didn't have, but Mr. Moon has now. So, so mm. you're, I mean, what I hear you saying mm. is that two mm -hmm. separate individuals yes. should be judged completely separate. Separate standards. Moon Jae-in should be judged based on who he is and what based he, on who he is. Yes. wants to do. Yes. Um, that is something that Kim Sung-ju, who was here last uh -huh. week, she's one of the co-chairs of uh -huh. Park and Hayes campaign, yes. would uh, perhaps disagree with you uh -huh. about, she tried to try, uh, tie in Moon Jae-in uh -huh. uh -huh. with some of the corruption scandals uh -huh. that occurred during President uh -huh. No's administration, uh -huh. um, basically saying that Moon Jae-in should take responsibility for mm -hmm. what happened. How, how would oh, you respond to that? That's completely onto allegations. That's, um, that has no substantial um, evidence um, to prove the kind of allegation. I don't think she shouldn't have made those kind of allegations. I mean, he is so famous um, for the fact that um, he is a man of integrity. I mean, a lot of, um, actually, the investigation involving President Lau's tragic death, there was no um, wrongdoing on the part of Mr. Moon. He was the, I mean, the person who had no um, problem in, investigation of all these um, political scandal and other problems. Right. There, were, there, were no, there was no proof that he was involved no, in no, any No, 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 there is no problem. And, and I don't think he's that kind of person. He's totally um, the straightforward and honest and man of integrity, I should say, again and over and again. All right. Well, we appreciate that. And we'll certainly be watching over the next couple of weeks to find out yes. how the talks between uh, Ancho Su and, and Moon uh -huh. Jae-in go. And then yes. uh, also in the weeks to come after that with the election sure. coming up very quickly. Yes. Uh, Shin ji we thank uh -huh. you so very much for, for taking mm -hmm. the time to speak with us today. My pleasure. And that does it for this edition of After 10. Next week on the show, we'll be speaking with a representative from Anchel Su's camp. You can follow us on Twitter and drop us a line there or check out our message board if you want to leave a message. Take care and we'll see you next week after 10.